Django 2017. I'm here at the booth of Aiello with Keith, who is going to tell us about a new release by, by Aiello, which is Mountains of Madness. And since I am a big Lovecraft fan, I'm very excited about this title. Thank you, Keith. You're welcome. Welcome to Mountains of Madness. It's, a, it's part of the HP Lovecraft world, but I think unique to this game, it tackles something that most games don't, which is the madness. As you go through the novella, characters start going mad, and so Rob Davio is the inventor of this. He wanted to capture that essence of the game, which is really one of the cores of the of how that game will play. So players in the game actually start to experience what it's like to go mad uh, during the course of the game. So you, as you can see, we've got different goals. You're going to start at the base, work your way up uh, the mountain, uh, getting to the city, and then try to get out. But you're going to be very limited. You're going to be starting where the plane is at the bottom on the coast, work your way up through the top to the edge of madness, and then take the escape planes out. Uh -huh. But in the center of the board, you'll see this sand timer. That is very integral to how the game plays. So as you move up, you're going to encounter a card that's going to have uh, some supplies that are needed. It may tell you that you need a range of 12 uh, to 15 pickaxes. Uh -huh. Players are going to have those cards in their hand, might have a pickaxe or six. Another person will have a pickaxe or seven. You know those two pickaxes together put you in that range of 12 to 15 or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. uh, so people are going to need to communicate together to say what we've got, what we're doing. But the core of the game are these madness cards down here. So the can madness... We peek, can we have a peek at some of them? Nice. Yeah, box sensor design is something we pay attention to. Uh -huh. So all the games okay. have to do with communication. I see. They get more and more tricky. Is it cooperative? It is cooperative. Everybody's playing to get things done. So you have to stay at least 10 feet from the table. So when that timer comes up, you have to get up and back up. So there's an aspect of LARPing almost, like a live yes. action role playing game. Yeah. And some of them are quite hysterical, some of them are very difficult. Can you give me some more examples? Sure. Because I think the viewers would be curious about this. When someone asks me a question, I repeat it and ask, is that right? So it's taking up time, considering uh -huh. that your, your timer is only yeah, 30 yeah, seconds. Yeah, yeah. You're wasting precious time in communicating, and that's really what the game is. The leader's going to be trying to get uh, the entire team to decide on what cards they need to use. Mm -hmm. uh, and, but you can only communicate based on the madness cards you have. You can't tell anybody else what your madness is, they just kind of have to deduce it. Mm -hmm. So the very first one you go through, nobody knows what anybody has. Yeah, Maybe yeah. a card is simple saying, I have to hide five everybody before I can start talking. So the very first time you're doing this and everybody's going, yeah. I don't know. But after that first time, everybody immediately then high fives that person so they can get that over with and start yeah, talking. Yeah. So trying to find out how everybody communicates, what their little quirks are, is really integral to the game, completing those uh, little elements. If you don't complete it, you roll the dice, which could lead to injury, uh, could lead to more confusion, which is uh, more of the matter. Madness. You can also. Uh, so everybody starts with people. one, or you acquire them as you go. You start with one, uh, but as you uh, go through, uh, you, you'll acquire more. And the further up you go, the challenges become more difficult. Uh, the madness. Oh, I see. Uh, yeah, the back is different. Escalates. Basically, he gets to me, but he can consult you. Other little touches they've done. About doing this, or do you think you can't take this? So these. As I said, it's going to tell you what tools you need and the range you need. Mm -hmm. As you can see, it starts to escalate. Numbers get larger. Uh -huh. In addition, they start to change colors, so the game itself starts to go mad. Oh, so as you're playing it, so... We'd argue too much to be effective, but we See, this one doesn't even really have colors on it. I see. The items are now upside down and sideways. So that as you progress up the map, they just did thematically some really cool stuff with this yeah. game. If you do succeed, you get certain bonuses, which are good. If you have injuries, you can heal back up, or this one gets you uh, specimens, which are the relics you need to uh, collect to get out of the game. Uh, you need to exit 
with more relics than you have injuries. Uh, and, and so each player's chart uh, really more thematic, but it gives you what each stage is. Uh, bonuses there are leader tokens. If you lose self-confidence, the leader tokens start to disappear, which gives you uh, fewer actions that you can take that will help you in the end run. So mm -hmm. all in all, it really is a balance of keeping your sanity as you escalate up the mountain. Fascinating. Fascinating. Very inventive. Very original design. Yeah. How long does it take to play usually? It's a, especially first time, probably a good full hour. You might shave some time after, after that if everybody's played before. It's a three to five. It has to be at least three because of the communication aspect of the game. So three to five players. Uh, this one's going to be hitting stores in about a month. Uh, and this is $40. <laughs> okay, so if they don't get it here at Gen Con, they'll have to wait for about a month. have to wait. Thank you, Keith, for this very informative overview of Mountains of Madness, a new release by Ayello. Yeah. Thank you, Keith. Oh, thank you. You're so